greetings and let us become a little more familiar with some acid-base titration curves and some calculations. Now these are probably the two most important acid-base titration curves. They're the ones used most often. And we'll look at a couple others as well, but the first one we see here on the left is when we have a strong acid, strong base titration. And the one on the right is when we have a weak acid, strong base titration. And so let's look at a couple aspects of these curves that we can recognize if we were given them on the AP exam without some certain labelings that are on these curves. But for the first one, the first thing we want to notice is that the equivalence point is at a pH of 7. When we have the equivalence point at a pH of 7, that's when we know we have a strong acid, strong base titration complete neutralization has happened. Other thing you want to notice, look where we're starting our pH at. Way down here at a very low pH value, indication of a strong acid. When we go through the equivalence point, we have a pretty steep straight line here, where, or uh, sorry, vertical line. And you can see, because that's we're having a big jump from a strong acid pH up to a strong base pH. So that part of the graph is pretty extensive. And the other thing you want to notice then is when we end this titration, the pH is indicative of a strong base. And so those are all some things you can notice on that curve that will tell us, hey, this is a strong acid, strong base titration curve. Weak acid, strong base, and you can kind of compare them here next to each other. But again, you'll notice that we have an equivalence point that has a pH greater than 7. Okay, And so we can see that whenever we have a weak acid being titrated by a strong base. That's because of the hydrolysis of the conjugate acid salt will form some hydroxide. Plus, you're adding... Some a strong base hydroxide. So we'll always see an equivalence point greater than 7. You'll also notice that the starting pH is low, but it's not as low as we saw with the strong. So, you know, typically in the between 2 and 3 range, whereas opposed a strong acid will start closer to around 1. You will notice that before the vertical jump that we have a buffering situation going on. And so we can see right here, there's an extended portion of this graph where even though we're adding strong base, there's a buffering situation going on. And you'll also notice their very important point, the half equivalence point is halfway through that buffer region, and that's where the pH equals the pKa of the weak acid that's being titrated. And then again, you'll notice that the curve, this vertical portion, is not as significant as it was in the strong acid, strong base curve because the pH jump is not as tremendous. And then again, you'll notice that when we finish this titration, we are again at a pH that's indicative of a strong base. So those are some important key components of our titration curves for our two most popular, to use a, a, a phrase, sorry. But if we look down, uh, if you look at the back of your packet, there are some other acid-base titration curves. Not as common, but don't be totally shocked if you ever saw them. But take a look at those and look at some of the components of those curves like we just did the other two. Okay, you can see strong base, strong acid, again, equivalent, oops, sorry, equivalence point of 7, and you'll notice that we start at a very high pH and end at a very low pH. So it's just the reverse of um, strong acid, strong base. Same thing with weak base, strong acid. Again, uh, if you start with a weak base, your pH would be you know, high, but not as high as 13 or so for sodium hydroxide. And you would end at a very low pH, indicating a strong acid. And you would also see a buffering situation here, just like we did with weak acid, strong base. 
and you would notice that the pH at the equivalence point is below 7. So again, all the reverses of when we looked at the weak acid strong base. Notice also there the half equivalence point of these curves, your pOH equals pKB. The other two curves show um, polyprotic acids. Okay, they're both weak acids being titrated with strong bases. You can see that with the pH starting and ending points. But just notice that if you had a diprotic acid, there would be two equivalence points. And if you had a triprotic acid, you would have three equivalence points. Okay, like three bumps in the curve, I guess you might say, as opposed to two bumps in the curve for diprotic. So again, get comfortable with those, mostly with these two, but you can kind of get comfortable with the other ones as well. Now let's look at a couple different calculations that you might need some help with. These first ones are similar to the Norton Chem Tour I had you go through, but essentially when we're titrating, and here we're looking at sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid, but when we're mixing acids and bases together any time, whether it be a titration or not, you can figure out the pH um, based upon the conditions given to you. So in this first one here, I want to calculate the pH. I've got 15 mils of 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide and 25 mils of 0.1 molar hydrochloric. Whenever you're doing this, you can go right to the mole level and figure out which, whether the acid or base you have more moles of, and then you can look at the total volume of the solution, calculate the molarity, calculate the pH. Okay, and I'll show that in a little more detail here. But first off, what I recognize on this question is that I've got the same concentrations, 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide, 0.1 molar hydrochloric. So when I see that, I just look at how much extra stuff I have. And so you can see 15 mils of sodium hydroxide, 25 of hydrochloric. That tells me I have 10 milliliters extra acid. Okay, so essentially, if we had equal volumes of equal concentration, the pH would be 7. But since we don't, I have extra acid. So first thing in my head, I should expect to get a low pH value. And so all I have to do is say, okay, these 10 mils of extra acid, what I want to do is figure out how many moles that is. All right, so I've got 10 mils extra acid, which is 0.01 liters. And I know the molarity is 0.1 molar. So when I take my molarity times my volume, it will tell me that I have 0 0.001 moles of hydrogen ion, hydronium ion, acid present. So that's how much extra moles of acid there are. I just need to divide that by the total solution, which is 15 plus 25, so that's 40 milliliters, 0.04 liters and that will give me a concentration of 0 0.025 molar and again hydrogen or hydronium so when I take the negative log of that then of course I get the pH and the negative log of 0 0.025 will give me a pH of 1.6 1.60 if you want to play the the sig fig game so that's all good, and so you can do the next question the exact same way. Maybe you've already tried it, maybe not, but pause the video, give it a shot, and see if you get this answer. Hopefully you found that the pH is 12.2, because, again, it should make sense in our head, 35 mils of the NaOH, 25 mils of the hydrochloric acid. So there was more base this time, and so we expect a higher pH. Now, both of those scenarios had the same molarity. It's not on your practice paper that I gave you, but just in case you get a situation where we have different molarities. So in this situation, my hydrochloric acid is 0.1 molar. 
my base is 0.15 molar. Okay, so again, what I need to do is figure out the excess moles, and that way I can then divide by the total volume and get the pH. So my hydrochloric acid, I've got 0.35 liters, I've got 0.1 molarity, so how many moles of hydronium do I have? Well, that would be 0 0.035 moles of hydronium. As far as my base is concerned, I've got 0.25 liters. I've got a stronger concentration. And when I do that, I find that I have 0 0.0375 moles of hydroxide. And so I can see I have an excess of hydroxide moles. So I should be thinking my base is going to be higher, or my pH is going to be higher because I have more base. How much more? 0 0.0375 minus my 0 0.035, and I have an excess of 0 0.0025 moles of hydroxide. So I just need to divide that by the total volume of solution, 350 plus 250, which is 0.6 liters. And when I do that, I get a concentration of, uh, hold on, 0 0.00417. Now remember that's hydroxide, so when I take, sorry, when I take the negative log of that, I'm going to get pOH. So when I do that, when I take the negative log of that concentration, my pOH is equal to 2.4. So my pH, and this matches my belief because I have extra base, is 11.6. So it's very common they could ask you the concentrations when playing mixy mixy with acids bases. The last one is when we have a weak acid being titrated with a strong base. So here I have nicotinic acid, 25 mils, 0.1 molar, being titrated with 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide. So at the start, we just have nicotinic acid solution. So if I want to know the pH, it's just like we've done before. I know that my equilibrium will be nicotinic acid for and water, making the nicotinate ion and hydronium. I fill out my ice table, and I end up with this. Of course, you can just go right to equilibrium if you're comfortable. And all of these, my Ka 10 to the negative 5, my starting concentration 0.1, I'm not going to need the quadratic. So I can then just ignore this. And I can set up my Ka expression, since I'm given a Ka value of 1.4 times 10 to the negative fifth. That equals x squared over 0.1. x is 0 0.0012, which of course, x is equal to hydronium. And so when I take the negative log, I can get my starting pH. Every time you're looking at this, Ka is equal to x squared over the initial concentration. This is always tends to be the case when we're dealing with weak acids and finding their pH. Now, what is the pH at the half equivalence point? And if you remember on our graph, pH is equal to pKa. And so all I have to do is take the negative log of my Ka to get my pH. Then at the equivalence point, okay, what is the definition of the equivalence point? That means that my moles of acid and moles or base are the same. So if I have 25 mils of my nicotinic acid, that means I have 0 0.0025 moles of nicotinic acid that needs to be equalized. And so that is happening with my sodium hydroxide. This is what's going on at the equivalence point. My nicotinate ion is 0 0.0025 moles over the 0 0.05 liters, so I can fill in my ice table, plug and chug, I can get my Kb, and get my concentration of hydroxide, which will then, of course, lead me to the pH. Sorry this was rushed. See you soon.